Uh, thank you for the introduction. Um, the only thing to add is I'm an art historian, so you get an art historical presentation about architecture uh, in fantasy and science fiction. And as I like to have very long, very descriptive uh, titles uh, with subtitles um, describing the title, uh, titles, and my focus, you know what's um, coming up, hopefully. If there are any questions, or um, I'm using some examples from fantasy and science fiction movies and um, anime, um, but I'm not going into detail of the plot because of the limited time, so just ask, interrupt, wave. I will read because I'm super nervous and um, not really good in, in um, speaking freely, especially not in English. <laughs> so, um, well, you see all my titles, so I'm starting. Um, architecture is possibly the most important and influential expression of human civilization. It assembles, in one point, progress in technologies and human inventiveness, the human need to create and to design its environment, and to express ideas, visions, and beliefs. Especially when it comes to representative uh, buildings, like temples and cathedrals, city halls, senate buildings, universities, libraries, corporate headquarters, and other public examples of architecture. <coughs> Architects and patrons express certain ideas and purposes when designing a building. The design is a matter, of course, subject to its time and style, the requirements of the building's function, the aerial context, and the local traditions. Therefore, every public and representative building is an expression of, polit uh, of a political agenda, and with this, an expression of might. Yeah, I just brought you some examples from, of course, Europe. I'm from Europe, so um, that's uh, the things I have in mind. Um, is, I guess most uh, know the, the buildings, the Westminster um, Parliament, of course, of Great Britain, the Palace of Culture and Science in Warsaw, which is a very famous um, example for the Soviet style that's combining a little bit of Neo Gothic, a little bit of Art Nouveau, and of course, the, as we call it in German, Zuckerbecker stil. Um, <laughs> I have no idea how to translate it, and I guess it's not translatable. And uh, Trinity, famous Trinity College Long Room of the Old Library. It's not a Gothic example, it's more Renaissance because of it was built 1592. But as the world comes um, coming up in Dublin, and the fantasy example have, uh, has a good reference um, in this, I choose this. Because representative architectures play an important role in the different media of the visual fantastic. The displayed architectures have multiple functions. As a part of the world building and fictional history, to create and illustrate the background setting and atmosphere, to give context and orientation, and to demonstrate, like in reality, political power, religious ideas, or other representative forms and functions. It can be stated that the fantastic monuments follow the requirements of real architectures and recite historical and current spe uh, specifications in styles, motives, forms, and dimensions. And it is always rooted in real art and architecture and their strategies. Just we really randomly chosen um, examples of fantasy um, architecture, like from the, uh, the Tower of Babel, which is uh, part of my PhD thesis, um, from a comic, or Bloodborne, which is a very spooky and scary uh, video game, um, and of course the Jedi archives in the Star Wars uh, movies, um, which are um, rooted in the Trinity College uh, Library just so you have an idea what I'm talking about and what are my research is. But today, I'm using the Gothic styles and sacred structures as a leitmotiv, which is very nice that you have this word in English, um, for the presentation. <laughs> One of the most influential styles in history is the Gothic style. Till today, it is um, associated especially with monumental sacred buildings as the Gothic cathedrals in France, Britain, Germany, or Czech Republic. Um, for the centuries, it was the state-of-the-art style to build and decorate representative buildings, not only limited to the Middle Ages, but also during historicism and eclecticism from late 18th to early 20th century. The Gothic style also influenced modern design schools as Art Nouveau and Jugendstil, and was even used to decorate some of the early symbols of modernity, skyscrapers. Like the Woolworth Building in New York City as a very prominent example, um, Neo-Gothic decorations, sacral elements, and the shape of the building with a cross ground plan gave it a nickname Cathedral of Commerce, referring to the named Gothic elements. Um, as you can see, I hope we have... No, we don't have the... And the uh, Woolworth building is um, in the shape of a cathedral with a um, clock tower and a 
um, names and everything, just in a very modern and abstract way, of course. Um, and it really has very nice uh, neo-Gothic decorations everywhere. Still from the 90s. <coughs> Besides already mentioned cathedrals, the Gothic styles were used for other public, um, other buildings representing power, wealth, and self-confidence. Chapels and palaces of the nobility, houses and mansions of the upcoming civic society, later city halls, justice palaces, and train stations. The Gothic, with its iconic elements and motives, is a demonstrative link between the centuries, building types, and with its uh, fantastical use between the real and the fictional. Gothic and Gothic-influenced styles are popular in the architectural concepts and designs from the more medieval-oriented fantasy to the futuristic and technological settings of science fiction. A special role for the Gothic reception has the horror genre, uh, with haunted houses and evil castles, but today I'm focusing on fantasy and science fiction. The historical and fantastical use of Gothic styles and elements for representative buildings are both rooted in the association of this certain style with economic and political power, technological advancement, and the demonstration of claims. The Gothic style, with its dominant vertical tendencies and the replacement of pairing structures, create an atmosphere of transcendence, sublimity, and a surge in out of this world sacrality. The Gothic style developed special spatial compositions that derived from religious contexts but allowed to, um, a transfer to, transfer to other public functions. For this reason, the Gothic style was not only used to build uh, spiritual locations, but also to underline the divine source of political power. In the fantasy imagery, for example, many throne halls are using Gothic styles for this reasons. So our first example is very prominent, I guess. Um, <coughs> but I stick to my, my script. Um, it's written for people who don't know what Game of Thrones is. Um, you never know. Um, the World of a Song of Ice and Fire by George R. R. Martin, surprise, surprise, is considered as one of the most political settings in modern fantasy. The TV show Game of Thrones is an impressive transfer in images of the literate work with many designs for buildings and landscapes that use uh, strategies and receptions of actual art and architecture. By the way, this is uh, made in Germany. Uh, the political center of Game of Thrones is the city King's Landing, with the Red Keep that we can see here, um, as the fortified seat of the ruler. The exterior ensemble shown in the show consists of three parts. The massive and vertical castle, with little decorative elements, a gothic-styled hall connected to it, and the surrounding of yards, gardens, smaller buildings, and uh, castle walls with watchtowers. I guess it's easy to see. Um, the Gothic building contains the throne hall with the Iron Throne as the, um, as the important symbol of rule over the Seven Kingdoms. This building is designed like the sanctuaries of Gothic cathedrals, the most sacred place where the main rituals were held place. It also should be mentioned that the interior design of the throne hall set has no connection to the exterior CGI design and the structure of the building there. Just to, you know. <laughs> This, and this is how it goes on the inside. <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> uh, besides the general reception of Gothic sanctuaries, um, there is a certain resemblance of the exterior, uh, mainly the clear story, with the concept of Saint Chapelle in Paris and its um, successors. In Game of Thrones, the pointed arch windows with the three lenses. Um, we left it uh, separated by one pier that is connected to the roof by a short supporting arc. The same structure can be found uh, at Saint, uh, Saint Chapelle. There's also a resemblance with the appearance of closeness that um, Saint Chapelle very famous for. The most important and sacred place in constructions like sanctuaries, but also throne halls, is the middle of the apse. You can see it on the right side. Easy to spot. Um, in Paris, the shrine of the Holy Crown of Thorns is placed at this point. We can see there. Um, with a little uh, thingy there. Uh, well, uh, on the one hand, it is uh, one of the most valuable relics of Christianity and focus for adoration. On the other hand, Saint Chapelle was part of the royal palace of France, and owning this important relic was a display of power, divine right to rule, and claim to dominate uh, the Christian world by the French king. 
um, my professor for theology always said when we were visiting um, some chapelle, um, this is a powerhouse um, of uh, God. Because it's like standing inside of a huge um, um, uh, fabric, no, not fabric, um, industrial thing with a, this relic in, in the middle as a source for divine power, spreading it through the um, famous glass walls and everything. It was it's very fun. Um, at the same spot, the Iron Throne is placed in Game of Thrones. In the TV show, there is no apps designed to underline the sacred position. In cooperation with George R. R. Martin, the artist Mark Simonetti illustrated the throne hall and the arrangement of the Iron Throne uh, in it, how the author imagined it while writing the books. In his illustration, Simonetti shows a monumental Gothic-inspired interior with obvious references to Christian cathedrals. The gigantic throne is set at the same position as the main altar in churches. The reception strategy here in using and referring to historical ones, like the exemplified Gothic style, and to special, here sacral, building types and interior designs to demonstrate political importance and power is not only limited to the medieval-oriented fantasy genre, it can also be found in science fiction. <laughs> Um, an impressive example for a diverse reception of Gothic styles from a sacred context for representative, uh, representative interiors and exteriors is the movie Jupiter Ascending by the Wachowski, Wachowski uh, uh, twins, released in 2015. One of the most... Uh, uh, well, does every, everyone know the movie? Uh, okay. um, one of the most powerful, wealthy, and influential families in the galaxy is the Abrasex family. The Abrasex heirs ruled their planets from megalomaniac and representative architectural monuments. Due to technological advancements, the wealthy elite is nearly immortal and characterized as almost godlike acting and self portraying This mindset is shown in their residences. Without going into detail of the plot, one of the main scenes is taking place in a majestic, white-colored and gothic-like cathedral on Titus Abrasic spaceship. The central aisle, uh, this was a, what, what is it, a concept art for the movie, and here we have a film still. Um, the central aisle, with its round art ambulatories and two gallery level, uh, levels, is shown as a historical stone-made church, just in monumental dimensions. The aisle is overdrawn by a gigantic vault made of glass and tracery. From the top uh, uh, gallery, huge clustered piers with a broad base is reduced themselves to the top and carry the vault. This is designed as tracery with glass filling and with pointed arcs and uh, geometrical art and wall patterns. In the same style, the walls of the sanctuary are shown, connecting the vault and the floor with an overwhelming view into space. It's a bit difficult to see here with all the glitter coming down. Um, they all combine an organic tree-like appearance with ge uh, geometrical and gothic elements. Just another concept art um, that shows a bit more the, an overview of the room. It's really difficult to get a good uh, film still. Um, these are the best ones I could find without doing some weird video stuff. Um, yeah. uh, Contrary to this uh, example, uh, Balen's headquarter uh, is headquarter of that design. I don't know. Um, he rules his planets and businesses from a gigantic refinery. Although it is a factory, the space station has representative areas, ports, and even a throne room. The main factory building that you can see here uh, is a combination of industrial design and Gothic elements from medieval cathedrals, all monumentalized and constantly repeated. With a closer look, uh, the decorated pillars and pinnacles from Gothic cathedrals can be found everywhere on the outside of the building. I hope you can see this, for, uh, especially on the right side, of course, where um, thing is, but we have better examples. Um, furthermore, pointed windows with tracery, decorated Gothic friezes, and other elements can be recognized. The concept art and production designs for the movie make these uh, references to medieval sacral architecture even more obvious. Here we have a landing pad, uh, it's a bit small, but we have a closer look to this. This is like um, real Gothic uh, towers and decorations just um, in this combination of a landing pad. Um, is it? Yeah, it's a production design. Um, the Gothic repertoire of forms is also transformed and abstracted to give it a more futuristic look 
and to vary the forms. You can see it here with the concept art um, of the landing pad uh, again, especially with the, I don't know, I have a um, the surrounding of, uh, of the landing pad. It's really like a neo Gothic, medieval like um, city with cathedrals and monumental statues. And on the down, um, uh, under it, uh, the concept for the landing pad, you can see the um, supporting arts with the pinnacles and everything. It's really well made, really pure, pure gothic. Uh, yeah. uh, ruthless use of power, seeing humans as a resource and almost immortality are the main aspects of the uh, Brassex eras and are expressed in their homes. The combination of godlike might and behavior with advanced technology is reflected in the sacral and representative use of gothic elements cathedral models and architectural strategies. <laughs> Another form of adopting actual architectural strategies to express political demands in the visual fantastic is to use well-known building structures and spatial arrangements in a larger context. A demonstrative example can be found in the Dragon Age franchise. It combines fictional political background with uh, Gothic reception and an actual representation of might through architecture in a religious context. The Grand Cathedral in Val Royale, you can see it here, uh, shown in the anime Dragon Age, Dawn of the Seeker, that was published in 2012. Uh, the Grand Cathedral is the heart and center of the main religion in the fictional world of Thedas. It is placed in the center of the capital of the most powerful country, the Empire of Orle, which is referring loosely to medieval France. The cathedral area is located in the center of the city. It is an enormous rectangle compared to the surrounding buildings. It consists uh, of the outer walls with several quadratic towers. The so-created inner space contains the actual cathedral with half of the area and an open space with a cone-shaped monument in the middle of the whole site. The cathedral consists of two parts, the rectangular main building and the two wings coming out of it on the left and on the right sides of the main entrance. With its monumental sizes, the repeating arcade structure, the small color palette and the basic geometrical forms, um, the Grand Cathedral seems to be a one monolithic uh, building. And the whole setting can easily be associated with the St. Peter's Cathedral in Rome and the St. Peter's Square in front of it. Of course, the similarity is not evoked by style, decoration, or architecture itself, but by the arrangement of the similar parts. An open space for masses of believers with a monument in its center. In Rome, we have an obelisk. Uh, in Val Royale, in a fictional um, example, a weird shaped curved object. I have no idea how to describe this. Um, embraced by two colonnaded wings leading to the main building. Furthermore, St. Peter's Cathedral has in its uh, synod uh, balcony to announce to the people. Everyone knows where the Pope is standing there doing stuff. Um, I'm a Lutheran, that's why it's not. <laughs> um, the main cathedral itself is similar with a widely recognizable dome in, uh, in Rome and two monumental towers in Dragon Age. As St. Peter's Cathedral is today a Baroque setting with its uh, roots in the Renaissance, the Olesian setting provokes more of an association with the French Gothic cathedral, uh, cathedrals in Vence <laughs> or Paris, especially the famous West faces with their <coughs> monumental structures and stone-carved decorations. With Orlé being loosely based on medieval France, this would, uh, this would not be surprising. All three references, Paris, uh, the cathedral of Paris um, as a capital of the kingdom of France, uh, France, the Cathedral of France as a, is the coronation location for the French kings and the Vatican as the capital of the Roman Catholic Church uh, show a distinguished and intended connection to political claim and architectural representation by a religious institution in the fictional world. The examples from different fantastic media show that a conception and a realized design of representative monuments in fantasy and science fiction are rooted in actual architectural strategies and realizations. The limited focus on Gothic styles and sacred spatial concepts can easily be transferred to other styles, genres, and building types. The used methodology of art history with description, analysis, comparison, and contextualization I love this word, can help to examine uh, the different ways and forms of reception and to understand the effects for world building, plot, and atmosphere creation 
or the associative interpretation by the recipients. The fantastic imagery is an expression of how people see the past, the present, and the future. The fantastic, with all its media, it forms as asks questions about social and cultural developments. With its functions, it is a laboratory for reflection, demonstration, and experiments. It uses manifold strategies to do this, for example, alienation, transformation, and in the case of this presentation, reception. With the boom of the fantastic during the last around 20 years and the technological advancements in visualization, for example, digital art, Photoshop, CGI, um, new standards in the visual world building were set. All architectural elements, like buildings, monuments, statues, gained an even more important role in the fantastic imagery for its persuasive power and to create a somehow more realistic fantastic. Architecture expresses ideas, beliefs, and polit political agendas for millennia. It structures and influences not only the external surrounding, but also the internal actions and phenomenological perceptions. Therefore, it applies bo uh, to both the real and the fictional world. Architecture is might. Thank you.